Okay, so we are going to be talking about a question 12.53 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. Um, now, I haven't got the question on the screen because all it's really asking is to prove the continuity equation with tensor notation. Um, so in green, I have the Maxwell equation we will need written in tensor notation, and in orange, I have its equivalent in um, vector notation. And we'll go through both the proofs and we'll sort of compare them to see how they fare up. Um, so first of all, to prove the continuity equation, we're going to do a little sort of argument of symmetry. So we, are, we have, or we want to know what the quantity um, partial mu partial nu of f mu nu is equal to. Um, so for starters, we can switch the uh, partial derivatives around. So that's going to be equal to partial nu partial mu of f mu nu. And then th through the anti-symmetry of the field tensor, that is just going to be equal to negative partial nu partial mu of f nu mu. Right? And then because these guys down here are just dummy indices, we may as well switch them around. So that's going to be equal to part, um, negative partial mu partial nu of f mu nu. But hey, that's what we've got up here. And if something is equal to the negative of itself, it must be equal to zero. Right? Um, so that's pretty good. That's really actually quite simple to do. Um, but what we notice we have in here is actually this guy up here. So if we substitute that in um, and get rid of the negative sign because it's not important, so I'll just um, get rid of that guy um, because it's equal to zero, we have that partial mu of mu naught, of course being a different mu, um, of the current tensor is going to be equal to zero. And then if we just divide out by that guy, we have our continuity equation, that is partial mu of the current density is equal to zero. Right, so not too bad. Um, of course, physical significance of that being um, nothing. Just cut that I said that. <laughs> um, so of course, the significance of that being that this is invariant, so it doesn't really depend on coordinate systems or anything like that. Anything like that, which is nice, and it's just really an argument through definition. Um, so it's quite good. And then we're going to do the exact same proof. I'll just put a line down here. Oh, no, I won't. I'll put a line down here um, with the vector notation. Um, and we'll see that the lines of working are a little different, but they do parallel to each other to a certain degree. So we're going to start off with the second of the equations. Um, and we're going to take the divergence of both sides. So this is pretty standard. So the divergence of the curl of the electric field is going to be equal to the divergence of the current, now no longer the four current, this is just the three current, and then plus the partial derivative of the divergence of the electric field with respect to t. I didn't cross my t before. Um, Right? Easy enough. Uh, note that I brought the divergence in. That's just to do with interchanging um, derivatives. And then on the left-hand side, we actually end up with that being equal to zero because of the divergence of a curl is always zero. Um, pretty standard vector stuff there. And um, then, yeah, I'll rewrite that. So the divergence of the current plus the divergence of, sorry, the partial derivative of the divergence of the electric field 
with respect to time is going to be equal to zero, just switching the equations around. And now in here, we substitute in our first Maxwell, or first of the Maxwell equations, and we just get that the divergence of the current plus the rate of change of the charge density, that should be a rho, is equal to zero. And that's the continuity equation. And these two things are identical, at least more mathematically. Um, so what do we see between the two proofs? What parallels? Okay, so for starters, the Maxwell equations that we use are identical. Um, one is just written in vector notation, one's written in tensor notation. Um, we start off over here using some argument to prove that something is equal to zero, just like over here. We proved that something was equal to zero mathematically. There was no physics involved in that. It was to do with the, um, in the uh, tensor case, it was to do with anti-symmetry. In the vector case, it's just your dot product, um, dot cross rule. Um, and then we made a substitution. Over here, we substituted into this. Over here, we substituted into that. And we end up with our final result. So I think that's quite interesting. Anyway, thank you.